August 15, 1947, after years of struggle, India gains independence from the British, but is vivisected along religious lines into two nations. Six months later, Mahatma Gandhi, the apostle of peace, and considered by many the father of this new nation, is murdered by Nathuram Godse, the disciple of nationalist leader Vinayak Damodar Sabarkar. Mahatma Gandhi became a global symbol of peace and non-violence. Yet his violent murder has remained only a footnote in history, and the burning question who truly killed Gandhi remains unanswered. It was an era of big ideas that would shape the world, ideas that would move masses and inspire millions to action. Fascism was working, and to many it was a rational, pragmatic, and scientific solution for Hindu interests. What would Godse's place be in this time of great transformation? Godse had a transsexual upbringing, if you are using Western categories, that probably attracted him to Gandhi, for him to claim that he was a participant in it, and he adored Gandhi. Hmm. And then gradually, he buys into the hyper-masculine worldview of Damodar Vinayak Savarkar, when Nathuram came under its influence, changed his life in some sense. He had a different kind of ideology, which gave meaning and a context. He began to look at India as a demasculinized society, not so much India, but Hindus as a demasculinized society, uh, ruled by um, uh, the British, before that ruled by the Muslims. That's the way he looked at it. Nathirum was young and capable with no prospects of his own. Savarkar was a brilliant guru with answers to all Nathirum's questions. The two also shared the same religion, region, and caste. There is a long, long tradition of conflict in Maharashtra. It's not an accident that uh, those people who assassinated Gandhiji were Maharashtrians. The historically speaking, the Britishers took over India from the Marathas. Traditionally, they were the leaders, not only religious leaders, not only spiritual leaders, but in Maharashtra, political leaders too. It was natural expectation that we have done it once in past, we will do it in future. Maharashtra was always in front, so far as the leadership of the freedom movement is concerned. And Gandhiji's rise was something unexpected, sudden. He was looked upon as, uh, you know, a start. And people were hesitant to accept his leadership. And traditionally, it was also believed that Brahmin should not accept the leadership or the Gurutva, Gurudam, of any person belonging to the caste lower than their caste. Gandhiji belonged to third Varna, that is Vaishya. So how can Vaishya lead the Brahmins? Gandhi seemed to them to be the biggest barrier to the success of their project. And the reason was very simple. As Nehru described him on his death, he said he was the greatest living Hindu. It's very difficult to push a communalized, politicized form of Hinduism against the greatest living Hindu. So that's why it was so important for them to get him out of the way. They understood that. With Gandhi around, there was no future for them. Though Godse states he decided to assassinate Gandhi on January 13th, 1948, attempts on Gandhi's life began much earlier. En route to deliver a speech in Pune, a bomb is hurled at Gandhi's motorcade, injuring nine people. Gandhi escapes unhurt.
Eight years later, in the middle of World War II, Gandhi led the controversial Quit India movement, demanding British withdrawal from India in exchange for a free India support in the war effort. The entire Congress party and most of its leaders were against launching a movement in the middle of the Second World War because they were all sympathetic to the war aims of the Allies and against Hitler. So was Gandhi. He had said if Westminster Abbey was destroyed, he would feel a personal sense of loss. And of course, they were deeply anti-fascist. And yet, when he got convinced that the popular mood, for various reasons, is deeply anti-British. He argued this point repeatedly and over a period of a few weeks and months, didn't convince people to the point where they said that, yes, we also agree, but okay, you know best, you're the boss. You know better what the people want and think. And they yielded to him. He even threatened and said that if you don't accept, I will leave the Congress party and out of the sands of this country, I will build a movement larger than the Congress itself. You know? And look at the power of that movement. It was really as if it was waiting to happen. It was a movement without leaders because the British jailed all the leaders in one, swooped down to the district level. And the people on their own, the massive manner in which that revolt took place, obviously Gandhiji was right. That anger had to be given an expression too. It could not be contained. He understood it. He could hear things, you know, because he always had his ear, you know, turned into what people were thinking. Again at odds, Gandhi was jailed for leading the Quit India movement. Meanwhile, Savarkar, now released and allowed to participate in open politics, was elected president of the Hindu Mahasabha the Hindu alternative to Gandhi's Congress party. But Gandhi's popularity was overwhelming. Again in Gandhi's shadow and from the margin, Savakar and the Hindu elite were furious. Don't be fooled by Gandhi. With him and all the leaders in jail, who will maintain Hindu interests? Upon release from jail, Gandhi went to the nearby hill station of Panchgani to restore his health. In Panchgani, every evening there used to be a prayer service. In this prayer service, people who worked in the ashram and other people who visited to study would join in. He just came in the front door and went up to the stage where Bapu sat and started yelling. I want to tell these people something, he said. He held a knife in his hand. As soon as I saw the knife, I held his hand and twisted it a little. The others helped me drag him out. The whole world knows that it was Naturam Godse. Later that year, another attempt is made on Gandhi's life. Gandhi is stopped en route to a meeting with Muslim leader Jinnah. Hindu activists erupt in protest, claiming Gandhi's appeasement to the Muslims is a betrayal. So some of us went and told this crowd that, well, Gandhi would like you to come inside and uh, we don't want to see his face. They refused to meet him. And then soon after that, they were arrested, the whole group. And they were searched and there was a big knife found from the person of Nathuram Gorse. Thirtieth of June, 1946. Boulders are placed on the train tracks in an attempt to derail his private train, the Gandhi Special, running from Pune to Bombay. Due to its proximity to Pune, the incident is linked back to the known anti-Gandhi gang that existed there. I fail to understand why there have been so many attempts on my life. 
The attempt on my life yesterday failed. I am not ready to die just yet. I am going to live till I reach 125 years. Mahatma Gandhi. You know, if you see the Hindutva's uh, RSS and Hindu Mahasabha's literature, uh, you'll find lots of cartoons caricaturing Gandhi before his killing. Gandhi is presented as something evil. Uh, Gandhi is the evil doer. Gandhi is the person who is the source of evils. So when you say constantly that he is an evil, he is an evil, he is an evil, then what do you do? What do you do? Then you you put idea in some people's brains that he got to be liquidated. In these volatile times, the world outside of India was forced to confront its own evil. The fascist movement, led by Hitler, rose to unimaginable heights and depths. The war ended with Hitler's suicide and the shocking realization that over 11 million minorities lost their lives for no other reason than being different. Gandhi's battle for peace and communal harmony became more relevant than ever. The whole world was watching to see if Gandhi's utopian dream was possible. Would he provide a new path for all of humanity to follow? In those days, Delhi was described as the city of the dead because uh, every night there would be killings, there would be bodies strewn on the roads in public places. In many places, uh, you could hear gunfire throughout the day. And it was a tinderbox because refugees were baying for the blood. They needed shelter, they needed food, they needed relief, and they needed revenge. On the 12th of January, Bapu informed the nation that he had begun a fast unto death for peace and communal amity in Delhi and the rest of India. And he, he said that nobody needed to do anything to save him because the only thing that would save him was if he was convinced that the Indians would now behave and live in peace and friendship with each other and uh, not resort back to this madness that had engulfed all of India. Death for me would be a glorious deliverance rather than that I should be a helpless witness of the destruction of India, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Islam, Mahatma Gandhi. Without him demanding that it was to be made as a condition of his breaking his past, the union cabinet declared from this place that they were going to give Pakistan the 55 crores, that they owed Pakistan as Pakistan's share of the British joint kitty. The government found a convenient excuse in Bapu's fast to announce their decision to give the money to Pakistan, which was inevitable. It was a signed treaty and it had to be obeyed. And that is what gave a convenient excuse to Nathuram Godse and Apte to justify their already planned decision to kill Mahatma Gandhi. But he had started buying weapons to kill Gandhi in November before that. This is a photo of five people. The first, Naturam Godse. Number two, Nana Apte. Number three, Vishnupant Kakare. Number four, Madan Lal Pawa. And lastly, Gopal Godse, my father. Godse and his best friend and financial officer of his newspaper, Narayan Apte, recruit three people, Madanlal Pawa, a disgruntled refugee, Vishnupan Kakari, a sympathizer to the refugee plight, Digamba Badge, an arms and ammunition supplier. Gopal, Naturam's younger brother, would also join them. The plan was one of them would explode a bomb at Gandhi's prayer meeting, and in the confusion, they would shoot Gandhi dead and escape. The date was set for the 20th of January, 1948. On the morning of the 19th, all the accused 
gathered in the dormitory of the Hindu Mahasabha, which is behind me, checked in with all their weapons and everything. On that day, a call was placed from the office of the Hindu Mahasabha secretary in Delhi to the residence of V.D. Savarkar. On the 20th, this must have been the path that the conspirators used to access these woods where they, for the first time, tested out the weapons that they had brought with them from Pune. And uh, to their horror, they discovered that they had mismatched ammunition and firearms. And when they took the shots at the targets that they had placed, they found that the bullet hardly traveled a couple of feet and fell to the ground. There was a stone grill, ventilator grill, which provided ventilation for the servants' quarters behind this wall. On the 20th, Badge was inside the room. He was to fire on Bapu from the aperture of the grill to where Bapu was sitting at, on this bench, a distance of hardly 10 feet. And then to make sure that uh, Bapu succumbed, he was to push through a hand grenade through the aperture of the grill. But they realized that it was so small that the hand grenade could barely pass through, so he couldn't lob it. And I think Badge, who understood arms and ammunition and explosives better than anybody else in the group, realized that there was a possibility that the hand grenade would not roll towards Bapu, but would just fall next to the wall and explode. And instead of killing Bapu, it could end up killing or maiming him. And maybe that was the reason that when Madanlal Pahwa exploded the gun cotton slab, which was the signal for Badge to do his assigned task, he chickened out and he did not do what he was supposed to do. Isi jage, takht posh laga rata tha. Gandhi ji yahan baithte the, aur main is jage baithta tha, is kone mein. Because us samay jo hai recording, aaj ki tarah nahi hota tha, ke cassettes and recording devices and so on. So just plain microphone held in front of Gandhi ji's mouth. That was the system, and the recording was done all the way in All India Radio. If you say that in Hindustan, then I will say that we have to be ashamed of our government, and we have to be ashamed of our government. So my hope is that we will remove it. I will finish it with one thing. I will finish it with one thing. I will finish it today. on the 21st, in his post prayer speech, he said something to the effect that if he has to go, he'll go anywhere. No major protection can ever protect him. And that his only wish is that if he has to go, he must go smiling. After his arrest, Madanlal took the police to the Marina Hotel. And the police confiscated the uh, shirt and the trouser and the undershirt from it. And all of them were marked NVG, Naturam Vinayak Godse. One of the things that he kept repeating intrigued the police and troubled them because he kept saying, wo fir aega, wo wapas aega, which means he'll come back again. We don't know why they ignored such apparent clues to the identity of the conspirators. 
Not a single question was asked from the Prime Minister's office to the investigating department about what was happening in the investigation on the failed attempt on Gandhi's life. 20 to 30, there was no security given to Gandhi. And because Gandhi, he, he, he did not want security. The government's duty, he could have placed people in civil uniform there if Gandhi didn't want armed people or something. So who is culprit? By knowing that Dathuram Gorse is going to have another attempt because Pahawa has already given in his statement that they are going to kill him again. And in those 10 days, they openly traveled throughout India, meeting their sympathizers, gathering funds, collecting the murder weapon, coming back, and you know, as if there was a red carpet rolled out to them right to the point where Nathuram Godse was standing in the fateful evening of 30th January. You know, there is a history, curious history of the gun. It was produced by the Beretta company and supplied to Mussolini's officers and was known as the fascist special. And it traveled from Italy to Eritrea with Mussolini's invading army, which was defeated by the British, but the commandant of this unit was an Indian colonel who accepted the surrender of this officer. And as the trophy of his victory, he took his gun. How that gun traveled from the Gwalior Palace to the hands of Nathuram Godse was a mystery. On the 30th, in the morning, when Nathuram came back from Gwalior with his gun, he also wasn't very sure of its abilities. And so Nathuram, Apte, and Karkare decided to come and try it out, the Beretta. And so they walked back into these woods. They set up targets at various distances, and Nathuram took shots at those targets. And that is where they decided that to be safe and accurate, they would do a point-blank shoot. One year before his death, he said to his grand-niece, while they were walking together, if I die lying on a, in a hospital or something like that, uh, with some fever or some kind of illness, then you can announce to the world that he was not a Mahatma, that you uh, think about him. But if I were going to a prayer meeting and somebody would come and shoot me and I would face the bullets on my chest and if I had the name of Rama on my lips, and if I did not have any bitterness in my mind about the killer, about the assassin, then you can tell the world that he was the man of God. There is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power which makes itself felt and yet defies all truth because it is so unlike all that I perceive through my senses. It transcends the senses, but it is possible to reason out the existence of God to a limited extent. Even in ordinary affairs, we know that people do not know who rules or why and how he rules. And yet they know that there is a power that certainly rules. I do dimly perceive that while everything around me is ever-changing, ever-dying, there is underlying all that change a living power that is changeless, that holds all together, that creates, dissolves, and recreates.
I heard a, the noise of a cracker. Since I was busy concentrating, I somehow thought the first shot that it was a cracker. But within two seconds, one or two seconds, came another shot. And then I, by that time, I realized that something had happened. And then I left off my equipment and ran. Those people who were standing, they immediately grabbed him, caught hold of him. He was dressed in khaki. He offered no resistance. And in fact, he offered his gun also. Wanted to surrender it. When he fell, Abha cradled his head in her lap. Until her dying day, she said uh, that she heard him saying, uttering Ram, 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 Ram. And the first indication that she had that he was no more was that chant which was fading stopped. Within the space of less than 30 minutes, the huge crowd milling both the gates thousands of people. Later that night, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister of India, climbed up halfway the gate of the Birla House and made his famous speech, the tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. The light has gone out of our lives and there is darkness everywhere. Our beloved leader, Bapu as we called him, the father of the nation, is no more. The light has gone out, I said, and yet I was wrong, for the light that shone in this country was no ordinary light. The light that has illumined this country for these many years will illumine this country for many more years. Nathuram Godse was the trigger man on that day. There were a lot of hands holding that gun and pulling that trigger from the background, making it possible for him to so successfully uh, murder a man he had been attempted to murder for so many times and failing. It was a very deeply entrenched conspiracy, there's no doubt about it. I could feel loneliness as if a, a fatherly figure, somebody who, who protected me or towards whom I saw as a guide is gone. I felt that absence. But then I found that all these people fused together into a one kind of uh, nation. There are Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs. In that he has achieved what he wanted, that it should be one nation. I think what happened was for every single person who was present at that time, he was their father. They felt an intimate contact with him. They felt the grief 
of the passing of a near and dear one. They felt the grief of the passing of a relative linked with blood. That was the bond that Bapu managed to build with people of his nation. It was ironical that the prince of non-violence was being carried on his final journey on a weapons carrier. But then that was beyond his power to negate. Now he was dead. Now his disciples could do whatever they liked and say that they were doing it in the name of the father of the nation. You cannot assassinate ideas. You can only assassinate persons. And I think ultimately, Nathuram Godse paid the highest compliment to Gandhi by assassinating him according to a scenario which Gandhi had spelled out himself to complete his life. We were informed about it on the radio. They mentioned that Nathuram had done it my family, and in fact a lot of other people, were of the opinion that whatever happened was right. They thought that at least now the remaining part of the nation will be safe. At least now the nation will not disintegrate further. A lot of people were of the same opinion, including my family. We also knew that my family will be adversely affected because when a great man is killed, the family of the killer will have to go through some trouble. We know from other people's experiences how the families are affected. This is what my family went through. But we were looking at it as something unavoidable and something that has to be faced. That was our mental state. This is the Tughlaq Road police station. On the night of the 30th of Jan, uh, after the murder, Nathuram Godse was arrested and uh, brought to this police station. Yes, sir, this original National Museum. Okay. This is the message of the book. This is the photo copy of the photo copy. This is the photo copy of the photo copy. This is the photo copy of the photo copy. This is the photo copy of the photo copy. Nathuram must have spent many a days, many an hours, sitting in this spot, looking out of uh, his uh, cell at the world outside. And I don't know what kind of thoughts must have gone through his head, whether they were thoughts of the glory that he was going to try and uh, get for himself, or he ever thought whether his action was justified. Because till the very end, there was no remorse. He bowed down to Gandhi to show his respect before shooting him, and he was proud of that. He said that to his son, Gandhi's son. He said to him, I didn't humiliate your father. I gave him a hero's death. His son was obviously expecting some sense of guilt and some atonement. He was disappointed. February 5th, 1948, Vinaya Damodar Savakar is arrested. 
He was like a mafia boss. Plan everything, but you remain behind the scene. Somebody else does the work. And when you say that, no, sir, you suggested you were part of that, you facilitated my arms with which I killed the bullets, you will say, where is the independent corroboration? And he knew, he knew that weakness of the Indian penal code. I think this is one of the most poignant parts of the whole story of the assassination is how Savarkar refused to even look in the direction of God say during the trial, because Savarkar believed that that might implicate him. Between Savarkar and God say, the bonding was very deep indeed, and there are memoirs which mention one by the lawyer of God say how deeply hurt he was, because Savarkar had claimed in the trial that he did not know Godse and never met him. Godse at least expected some commiseration, some words of sympathy, some encouragement from him after the death sentence was pronounced in his case. That also never came. Savarkar in many ways a very ruthless person. Like all persons who claim themselves to be revolutionaries, certain kinds of sensitivities and instincts were blunted in him. And everything he looked at through Machiavellian eyes, because he considered that genuine politics. For the third time in his life, Savarkar had inspired a young Indian man to murder. This time, Savarkar would walk out of court a free man. Godse would not. He gave a statement in court. May it please your honor. It's natural for people to think about the reasons as to why such a great man was killed. It can't be without a reason. Sometimes the killer commits suicide, or sometimes it's a controversy. And no one knows exactly why this person was killed. But this situation is not the same. He has clearly explained that the only reason he stayed alive was to present his side of the story to the court. He wanted to explain why he killed this man. There is a reason. There is a history that he wanted to share with the world. He said, that is why I didn't commit suicide. I had a lot of time, and I could have easily ended my own life. I could have easily run away, or I could have shot myself with the same gun. But I did not. I wanted to present the dark side of the story to the world. Early in the morning on November 15, 1949, nearly two years after the murder, Natyuram Vinayak Godse and Narayan Apte were led out into the prison courtyard. Godse came out first and was visibly shaken. His partner, Apte, was quietly serene. As they marched to the gallows, Godse kept shouting, India united, India united. The trap opened, and the bodies hurtled down. Apte died instantly, but Godse died slowly. Fifteen minutes passed before the convulsions came to an end. The bodies were cut down and cremated inside the prison walls, and the ground where the cremation took place was plowed over, though the family of Godse contends otherwise. Uh. This is the sacred urn of the ashes of Naturam Godse and Nana Apte. It has been preserved in this way because both of them had mentioned in their will that they want these ashes to be scattered only when the entire Sindhu River flows as one through an undivided India. 
Until that happens, they may not be scattered. These ashes are to be handed over from one generation to the next in the family until that happens. That is the reason these ashes have been purposely kept in a particular way. In 1964, nearly two decades after the assassination of Gandhi and the hanging of Matthew, Gopal Godse and the other conspirators are released, resulting in celebrations in Pune and public outrage throughout the country. The Kapoor Commission is struck to make a definitive inquiry into who killed Gandhi. Amidst the lead up to the commission, Savakar makes a decision to fast unto death. And on February 26th, 1966, at 10 a.m., at the age of 83, Savarkar breathes his last breath. The, the two-volume report of this inquiry is worth reading. If you read that, there is absolutely no doubt. You cannot have a doubt in your mind because the, the report is categorical in linking Savarkar with the conspiracy. It says so in so many words. And in addition to that, it provides all the evidence to do so. And the most crucial evidence is that of two of his very close associates who were like his personal uh, assistants who worked and lived with him, who gave evidence saying that, yes, he not only knew, but he was deeply involved in the whole conspiracy of the assassination. And the reason they did that now was because by now Savarkar was dead and they didn't feel that any harm could come to him. It was a time of big ideas that would shape the world. Peaceful resistance or violent revolution purity of means, or any means necessary. Cultural pluralism, or fascism. Was Gandhi a devil, or a saint? Was Savarkar a revolutionary, or terrorist? Gandhi, I mean, we know what he did in his life, but we forget that he contributed a great deal in his death. And that was that he gave the country almost 20 to 30 years of communal harmony or peace. The ideas that transformed Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi into the Mahatma, or great soul, provided inspiration to giants like Einstein, Mandela, John Lennon, and Martin Luther King. Likewise, the ideas that killed Mahatma Gandhi also continue to provide inspiration. In 1992, Hindutva supporters demolished the Babri Masjid Mosque in India, unleashing communal violence across the country. 2002, Gujarat, India. 790 innocent Muslims are killed by proponents of Hindutva. 2003, Savarkar's portrait is given a place of honor in the Indian parliament, and an airport in the Andaman Islands is named after him. 2011, in Norway, Anders Bering Breivik, inspired by the ideas of Hindutva, kills 77 people in cold blood. 